Hi guys, welcome to the Art of Server. Today's video is brought to you by a fellow viewer and Art of Server supporter from Japan, a gentleman by the name of Julian. So Julian, thank you very much for providing the footage that I'm going to be sharing with my viewers today. All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you a common problem that I've encountered with several of my customers that are using an AMD Ryzen or Epic platform in combination with an LSI HPA SAS controller. And in particular, this problem seems to be most prevalent with the PCIe Gen 2 HBA cards like those based on the SAS 2008 chipset. So what we're seeing here is Julian's Supermicro M11 SDV 4CT LN4F system, which has an AMD EPIC 3101 CPU. Now keep in mind, this is just one instance of this problem, and I've had many other customers using other AMD Ryzen or Epic servers that are experiencing very similar symptoms. So this is not specific to this Supermicro motherboard, but seems to be common with AMD Ryzen and Epic platforms, but not all of them. So the problem you're witnessing here is Julian trying to boot his system with a genuine LSI 9201-8i HBA card installed in the PCIe slot. And I said trying because what happens is that the system often gets stuck during post, especially when it's loading the LSI BIOS ROM program. Now, this doesn't happen every time, but according to Julian, he basically has to keep resetting his system several times before it will successfully boot up with the LSI card installed. If he removes the LSI card, the system boots up just fine every time. All right, so let's skip ahead a little bit here and take a closer look at what's happening. All right, so Julian's just reset the system again and it's loading the BIOS ROM and we can see that the system is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. There's supposed to be a little baton spinning and the, the, the LSI ROM uh, program should be scanning all the drives and then showing the controllers and the drives. And we're not seeing that, it's basically stuck at this point. And so Julian's trying to do another power reset. All right, so resetting again, let's see what happens. The problem isn't always consistently um, happening at the same point during the BIOS ROM uh, loading procedure. So, okay, here's the system posting again, starting up. And let's see, give it a little bit more time here. Okay, now it's loading the LSI BIOS ROM program. And so you see it says initializing. And that dash at the end is supposed to be a little baton that spins, but it's stuck. All right, so Julian's gonna power reset again. And we'll just wait for this thing to start up. All right, so here we are starting up again. And all right, here's the LSI ROM. Okay, we see it initializing again, but again, that baton is stuck and it's not spinning, so we have to reset. So, all right, let's at this point, let's go ahead and skip ahead. Basically, Julian's going to continue trying this until he can get the system to um, pass the point where he can get into the, the uh, system BIOS menu. So while we're watching Julian play Power Reset Hell, do me a favor and hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm so that more people will get to see how we fix this issue. All right, let's get on with it. All right, so here we are booting up the system again, holding on the delete key. That's uh, the keystroke to get into the setup menu. All right, so we're entering the setup menu and here's the LSI BIOS ROM loading again. All right, now you can see that little baton after the word initializing is spinning. And so that's normally what it's supposed to do. And then you get this message about control C to get into the configuration utility. And now it lists all the drives in the controller. So this is the normal boot up sequence that you're supposed to get every time, except on some Ryzen and AMD um, Epic platforms. All right, so looks like Julian's finally able to get into the BIOS ROM. And then we're gonna actually go in 
and make some changes that can fix this problem. All right, so here we are in the system menu. And the first thing we wanna do is get into the PCI configuration page. In here, we wanna change the target link speed for the PCI slot. Let me pause the video for a second here. The 9201-8i card is a PCI 2.0 card. And this is also known as Gen 2 and it's capable of five gigatransfers per second. So here we want to set the target link speed to five GT per S or five GT per uh, second. Now, if you're using a different motherboard with a different system menu, the options might say something else like 2.0 or Gen 2 instead of the 5GT per S. So whatever it is, you want to make sure that you choose the link speed that matches your HBA card. So for example, if you're experiencing these problems with a 9207-8i card, which is a PCIe 3.0 card, then you would want to choose Gen 3 or 8 gigatransfers per second instead. The next settings we want to change is the number of PCIe lanes for the slot where the LSI card is installed. Okay, let me pause here. The 9201-8i is a 8 PCIe lane card and it is installed in a 16 lane slot. This motherboard supports PCIe bifurcation and we're going to take advantage of this feature by telling the motherboard that the 16 lane slot is to be divided into two 8 lanes. By doing so, we're telling the motherboard to only allow eight PCI lanes to be used by the HBA card. These settings effectively take all the guesswork out of the PCI link auto negotiation protocol. And by doing so, we can bypass this problem. In short, I believe this problem is simply a PCI link auto negotiation issue on the AMD platforms with legacy devices. All right, so all that is left to do now is to save these settings and restart the machine. All right, let's see if this machine will now successfully post. Okay, so here is the LSI BIOS ROM loading. And we can see that the baton is spinning and not getting stuck. And we can see that the HBA card and all the connected drives are listed. Awesome. So guys, that's how you work around this PCI link negotiation problem on AMD Ryzen and Epic platforms. If you're experiencing this problem, hopefully this video will help you out. And once again, thank you, Julian, for recording this for me so that I can share the solution with everyone else. All right, guys, that's it for today. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing if you'd like to see more videos like this. Also, if you'd like to support this channel, check out my eBay store where I sell pre-flash HBA cards and other awesome server gear. I'll leave a link down in the video description below. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.